So you bring back some guys, you have some new faces. How do you feel about your group, especially knowing that Lovell, your big play guy, isn't going to be available for most of the season? I think the beauty of the group is the group. Um, it's unfortunate, you know, with injuries, but it gives guys other opportunities to step up. We just got to continue to keep working. Um, every day is an opportunity to get better, and that's what we're grinding to do every day. Hey, Marcus, you need me to speak uh, up? Dontavian speak Vicks up. seems like he's been sort of the peg as a breakout candidate. I was curious what you've seen from Dontavian in the first couple of practices this, this fall. He's just working hard. He's got a lot to prove. He's uh, ready for his opportunity. And every day he's showing up prepared, ready to work, to be one of the best in the ACC. And that's the standard I'm going to hold him to, and that's the standard of our group. And so far, um, he's met that challenge each day. It's a long road to go for the rest of camp and throughout the season. But right now, he seems ready for the challenge. Marcus, uh, tell us a little bit about him and, and what makes him special. We've heard a lot about him over the past year or so. And haven't seen him. Just what, what impresses you about him? Um, I love his attitude. He comes to work every day. Um, he competes. He's physical. And um, he loves to go get the ball. So just trying to help him learn the fundamentals of the position, be consistent. And um, hopefully with his ability, you know, that'll give him a chance to be one of the best receivers in the ACC. So every day he comes to work. And um, he's, I'm looking forward for a lot uh, from him, but our whole group as a whole. And so um, he's got a lot of talent. He's got to put it together each day, and that's that's what we're working on. Hey, Marcus, just with you know, the amount of talent that you, know, you talk about with Dontavian, do you feel like you're, you're on him extra hard because you know how much, how the levels he can get to? Yes, and I think that's with anything. I, I told him my biggest disappointment is if I don't get him to maximize the ability that he has. If I don't get him to see what I see in him, then I failed him as a coach. So every day I'm, I'm pushing him. And that's no discredit to anyone else in my group. I push everyone the same. I think some guys are just in, in different categories based upon what they've been blessed to be able to do ability-wise. And so if I don't maximize that, I'll feel like that's a big disappointment. So, yes, I'm on his ass every day, every single day, on and off the field. Uh, it seemed like last season, all, all college football teams around the country had that detriment of not having spring ball, and then fall camp was very small. Do you feel like that was most of the problem of the last year with miscommunication, um, errors, and route running? And then when you come down to this fall camp, you've seen a major improvement on where your wide receivers were mm. at this point last year. I think so. I think another big point was spring ball. Missing spring ball hurt a lot. And so a lot of guys get to develop during spring ball and then, you know, can kind of springboard once they get to fall camp. And so I think that whole process of us not having spring ball, which led into summer workouts, which goes into fall camp, is huge in the development, especially for new guys. And I think it was huge for our quarterback as well. So chemistry, you know, building that time with the quarterbacks and the receiver, and we missed out on that. So to have that back this spring, the development of the off-season program, and now back in the fall camp, I think it gives us the best chance to have really good chemistry with uh, a really good group of guys that's unproven, but really, you know, excited and looking forward to the challenge. So I think that that gives us our best chance to be successful week in and week out. Tony Kemp led the team in yards by a lot and receptions by a lot. What does he bring to this offense, especially knowing that if there's a guy that you need to get eight yards, he's going to be there and make it work? Billy's, he's, you know, he's one of the hardest workers I've been around. He's tough. He's competitive. He loves to, to prove that he catches the ball. Like some guys receive the ball, like they'll use their body to make catches. That's not him. He is very arrogant in catching the ball with his hands, which I love. And I think that gives um, kind of like a sense of a, a safety blanket with the quarterback because he knows when he gets the ball to Billy, he's going to get whatever he needs for the situation and he's going to come down with the ball. But just having that, that sense of security uh, with his ability to catch the ball, I think is a, a comfort level for our quarterback and our offense that we can go to him, um, especially in crunch time. So we got to find some other guys that can do that as well. But that's, that's a big strength for Billy. What does Artie Henry, the uh, the Marshall transfer, bring to the group for you guys? Oh, uh, man, a lot of personality for one. He's a funny guy. Um, he's mature, and um, he's just he's just getting his feet settled. So I'm I'm still kind of learning him. Um, what you know, what motivates him, what pushes him. Still learning his ability set. So um, kind of early to tell, but I do love the fact that he's coachable. Um, he comes to meetings prepared, and he works hard every day. So I'll have a better answer in a couple weeks. Right now, I'm still learning.
you got another transfer, you know, from last year, Rayshon Henry, who, you know, by all accounts has been really good in the spring and coming into fall camp. Just what do you expect from him this year as he kind of gets more accustomed to everything at UVA? I hope he continues to grow from the success that he has in the spring. So far in the off season, he's continued to continue to work hard, get his body in the best shape ever. Um, he's got his body fat down, and uh, he looks really well. He's in great shape. So now it's just a matter of taking what he did in the spring, um, continue to develop that throughout fall camp, and then throughout the season, making sure that he's the consistent guy that we can count on and trusting the ability and the work that he's put in, the preparation, and then just trusting that when the lights come on on Saturday. So I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad he was able to come back, and I think he's going to have a big year. What do you think really clicked for him in the spring? I think it was just time. You know, I think it's, it's tough to come in as a, as a transfer right away and learn the culture, you know, be productive and, you know, do everything that's asked of you. So I think that year just gave him a foundation to really, you know, ingrain himself in the culture and, and find out, like, what was really required of him to be successful in our offense. And so he's very, very coachable. He listens. And so I think that extra year is going to do him um, tremendous um, opportunity for him to put his best football on the field every Saturday. So I think that extra year has been beneficial for him, and I'm really excited for him. Has any other newcomers uh, opened your eyes and practiced thus far? No. <laughs> I gotta keep some stuff. I gotta keep some stuff close to the chest. <laughs> Marcus, have you um, worked much with? Keaton, I know he's this is QB slash wide receiver, um, and if so, what have you gotten out of him, and what does that allow you to do offensively? Uh, Keaton's a, a really special player. He can do so much. And so my, my role with him is just kind of offering any feedback and, you know, just kind of a little bit of details of routes. But a lot of his stuff comes through Coach and I and just his ability to be a playmaker. So uh, a few routes we connect, we talk about, you know, some, some things I'll add every once in a while. But uh, a lot of his coaching and teaching comes through Coach and I, and then he's just special when he gets the ball in his hand. So being able to have a guy like that um, puts pressure on the defense of who is he, where is he, and what is he doing. It also gives us a good advantage to, to be able to run a lot of different things on offense as well. I did that wrong. I was supposed to look at the camera. I'm sorry. We've got about time for about two more questions. Um, I think it was around May. Bronco said on the AC Network, this is probably going to be one of his best offenses in Charlottesville since he's, he's arrived. Do you kind of agree with the assessment considering all the veterans you guys have and the talent? I think on paper, I think that's, that has a really good chance to be true. However, we got to go out on the field and prove it. And so once this season is complete and we prove that, then I'll agree to that comment. But right now, I'm just one of the people who has to make that comment work. So we just focus on working and getting better each day. And hopefully in January when we're done playing, that um, statement comes to fruition. Marcus, what does it feel like to have Brennan back here for his second year as a starter now and trying to just see how, how much further the offense can progress now? Anytime you get a returning quarterback, that's huge. And, you know, a guy of Brennan's stature, you know, as a former quarterback, I just love watching him play. Um, he's got a great arm. He's got a great rapport with the offense. And he's got a confidence that's just out of this world. So um, I'm glad and thankful he's back. We got to keep him healthy. But, but, man, I'm expecting big things for him. And I think he's going to be one of the best quarterbacks to go down in, in program history. So if we do what we're supposed to, he'll have a chance to have a really special career and a special season. I'm going to ask Marcus one quick question. As Bobby Bowden passed away yesterday, mm. you obviously played against his teams. He had the great quote after the 90, or, or the victory where he said, that dadgum 18, we couldn't stop him. I mean, what are your thoughts on Coach Bowden and what he meant to college football? You almost said 90. That would have yeah. put me in school twice. <laughs> but it, And I'll be lying, like growing up, you know, everybody loved Florida State and, you know, the programs that he's produced, the players. You know, just having the opportunity to, to play against him and, you know, have him, you know, I don't always want to say give me recognition, but um, those words always meant a lot. And so just having the opportunity to play against someone that I, I grew up idolizing and, you know, having a chance to beat him. And, you know, those words will always stick to me because I felt like that's that's like the highest level of um, I don't even know if compliment, but just respect. I guess is the word I'm looking for. Like when someone give, pays you a comment like that, that's like the ultimate level of respect. So those words will always stick to me, and I, I pray for his his family. But it, it you can tell like he left a legacy that exceeds far beyond football, and hopefully one day um, that's the goal to to have the same impact on on different lives and not just on the football field.